the show. All right, Robbie Delaney is here in the kitchen today from a company called Sodexo, but you do all of the catering, all of the events whenever the Virginia Aquarium has a special event going on there. Absolutely. You guys are the ones they call. Yes, um, we actually do the food service in the cafeteria as well. Oh, lucky. Um, lucky. Uh, all year long, and then any catering events we do as well. All right, there's a big event coming up to teach people about eating uh, sensible and sustainable seafood. So you're making something today that kind of falls into that category, shrimp and grits. And you may at home be saying, I've had shrimp and grits before. Not like Robbie's going to fix them today because you are doing something a little bit different. Yeah, I wanted to put a little tweak on it because everybody's had shrimp and grits. So I decided to do tamales. Mm -hmm. And instead of using masa, I'm using a local organic corn mill mm -hmm. and fresh corn that we're going to grind up and, and make as our filling. Okay. So where should we start first? With the filling or the... Absolutely. Uh, we need to go ahead and make our ingredients for the tamales so that we can get those steaming because they're going to take the longest to make. Okay, and we will put the ingredients at thehamptonroadshow.com, but just for the folks listening right now, maybe trying to jot down a list, what do you got there? Um, we're going to go ahead and go with uh, fresh corn, mm -hmm. a little bit of honey. And we should mention that Robbie is loading these into his ninja blender <laughs> that you've been telling me all about. Yeah. And then we're going to uh, a pinch of Old Bay. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and Add a touch of water to this, and we're going to blend it up, mm -hmm. try to make it pretty much smooth. You know, uh, Antonio, our roving cameraman, he is also a ninja. Not if that's true. That's true, isn't it? That's true. I told you. All right, once this is pureed, we're going to go ahead and add it to a mixing bowl. Mm -hmm. We're going to fold in a little salt, pepper, and also we're going to add uh, cornmeal. Now, what about the rest of the stuff? Is that for later? Is that yes, going in the uh, tamale? Yes, absolutely. Yep. Okay. Um, we're going to add uh, chopped shrimp mm -hmm. to the tamale on top of it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have shrimp inside the tamale, and we're also going to do a uh, saute of shrimp and crab meat on the outside of the tamale. Never too much. Now, what kind of crab meat are you using today? We're using local uh, Chesapeake Bay crab meat. Okay. Does it matter if it's lump or clawed for a recipe like this? I mean, sometimes it's important to have those really big pieces, but sometimes it doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy jumbo lump because mm -hmm. it, it's larger. It's almost like a muscle. Yeah. And it's easier to get the shell out versus the back fin. It's mm -hmm. all shredded and there's lots of shell, which okay. it takes a little bit of time to get it real clean. Okay. Now, how'd you come up with this recipe? Um, well, again, I was thinking for the Sensible Seafood Fest to do something a little different mm -hmm. and just start thinking and doing research on because I've studied tamales as well and started doing research on it and found a different version mm -hmm. of it instead of the masa. You've studied tamales. All right, parents, if your college kid comes home and says they've declared a minor in tamale, don't laugh at them. They could actually be getting some, uh, some college credit. Is that what you're telling us? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, and then you're going to take uh, some large shrimp, mm -hmm. quickly dice it, and it's just a rough chop. It doesn't have to be too fine. Okay. And it, you can leave it raw, and we're going to fold it into the mix, and then roll the tamales. The tamales, you need uh, the corn husks, and they need to be soaked for at least two hours, if yeah. not overnight. You've got a couple soaking. Uh, I noticed that these are over here in a bowl of water. All right, well, listen, uh, we're already out of time for the first segment. All right, I'll we're going to let you keep working on the stuffing. Absolutely. And then when we come back, we'll roll them up. Sounds good. Okay, Rami, thanks very much. Back in Hampton Roadshow Kitchen, Chef Robbie Delena, busy, busy here. He's from the Virginia Aquarium this morning making some Southwest shrimp and grits. Robbie, of course, works for Sodexo, which does the uh, catering for special events at the aquarium, also cooks in the cafeteria every day for the employees that come in and yes. enjoy some of the food. And uh, doing a South a uh, shrimp and grits in a tamale, a little Southwest Absolutely. Mexican take yep. on that. So when, once you've made your ingredients, you set it in your corn husk, roll it twice, Fold the end in, mm -hmm. go ahead and finish it up. I like to push it down a little bit yep. and split up some corn husks oh, so you and tie use up that end. as a tie. Um, and again, you mentioned in the first segment that you, that you have to soak the corn husks so they become a little more pliable and yes. you can work with them. And then what you want to do is put them in a, a steamer, mm -hmm. um, You know, put water in the bottom of your pot and then use a perforated insert. Yeah. And then you're going to steam these for about 45 minutes to they're about firm. Okay. While that's working, I started uh, a roasted garlic cream mm. with uh, equal parts, five tablespoons of butter, five tablespoons of flour. And then once we made a roux, I put in roasted garlic. Uh -huh. And then we're going to add cream 
to make our sauce. At the at the end. Yes. Okay. All right. Gotcha. And then our saute pan is hot, so we're going to go ahead and add some shrimp. Mm hmm And again, you know, in, just in case folks missed it the first time around, the shrimp that went into the filling for the tamale was not cooked because it'll steam up, exactly. you know, in here. Okay. Exactly. So leave that raw, but then you're cooking this. Yep. So. We're going to get this cooked uh, about two minutes on each side. Once that is done, mm -hmm. um, we're going to go ahead and add some corn. And then we're going to add the crab meat to it. Okay. Again, it's jumbo up crab meat. Mm -hmm. Season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. Are you using uh, a sea salt or a kosher salt there? I, I use kosher salt. Uh, it's cut. The way it's cut versus an iodized salt. Yeah. Iodized salt's more round. Mm -hmm. Kosher salt's cut. So when you throw it into your food, it actually stabs into your food. Okay. So it holds on to your food. Well, a I mean better. that means you can actually use less, even though the flakes are bigger. You probably end up using less salt because you can see. Absolutely. And then you know, you won't continue to keep adding it. All right. So about one more minute on that. Mm -hmm. Tamales are gone. Our garlic cream's gone. So all we have to do is sit back and wait. Right, a second. All right. Well, if uh, well, all right then we. We can actually go ahead and um, move along to our organizing segment, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the event that's coming up Sounds at good. the aquarium. All right. Back in the Hampton Roadshow Kitchen, Chef Robbie Delaney from the Virginia Aquarium this morning, uh, making a Southwest Shrimp and Grits, making uh, Shrimp and Grits tamales, actually. Yes. A little different spin on a recipe that's pretty popular around here, but I can honestly say I've not seen it done quite this way. Well, I wanted to try something different. So how do you know when they're done? Uh, you're going to feel them, and they're going to be pretty firm. Okay. I mean, it, but it takes about 45 minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. All right, so leave yourself some time if you're going to make this. This yeah. isn't something you decide and to make at 5 if dinner's at 5.30. Exactly. And this, uh, the tamales themselves actually can be frozen okay. and kept up to three months. Oh, wow. So, so you can make them ahead of time make for a, a party. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, so once they're done, we're going to go ahead and just split them open. Mm hmm and you can eat that part, right? The wrapper part? You, you can, but, but it's... not really. Yeah, it's okay. kind of fibrous. I'm a little embarrassed yep. now. Mm. All right. Don't eat it. Gary. Antonio, yes? Yep. Nothing? All right. All right, so now all we're going to do is fold our crab, corn, and shrimp on top. Okay, and then we made the, uh, the garlic cream. The roasted garlic here. cream. Yes. Yep. yep. And then we'll finish it off with a little bit of garlic cream. Mm-hmm. Looks delicious, and then you've got some lovely things to garnish with, too. Yep. These are uh, corn shoots, mm -hmm. and they're sweet, and I figured that they You want to try to get all your garnish to go with the ingredients of your food. Can you eat those, or yes. are they just decoration? Yes. No, you can eat those. Okay. And if you try them, they're... I'm not the only one with these questions. Oh, I'm just the one who has to ask. <laughs> they're very sweet. And then we'll, we'll finish it off with a little bit of diced peppers okay. and green onions. All right, now you handed us this little pamphlet about how to pick out sensible seafood because this is what the event is all about that's coming up um, next weekend yes. at the aquarium. So when, we, when you want people to eat sensible seafood, what do you mean? We, we want to make a, a wise decision. Um, mm -hmm. So these are pocket guides. They're available at the aquarium, mm -hmm. or you can pull it up on the Virginia Aquarium's website. Mm -hmm. And they have a, a green, a yellow, and a red list. Okay. And even some stores are starting to put little stickers on their food that they're selling, right? Absolutely. Uh, we have Sustainable Seafood Partners, mm -hmm. and that's the event that we have coming up is the Sustainable Seafood Fest. So it says here your best choices, the ones that you find in green, are abundant, they're well-managed, they're fished or farmed, and then the, the things that you're supposed to avoid are, um, at least for now, they're, outer, they're overfished, or they're caught in ways that are harmful, sometimes not legal. Exactly. So that's a, just kind of a good thing to know. I mean, there's such a the the list for the best choices and even the good alternatives is just as long, if not longer, than the seafood to avoid. So I mean, even if you avoided everything on the list, there's still so much out there uh, to cho to um, choose from that makes there, a good choice. There definitely is plenty, and, and all the fish on there is is definitely a good fish to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of them you may not have heard of, but you know. Take a step out the box and try something. Yeah, and know that you're making a wise choice that's good for the environment and good for the industry, too, the folks out there trying to make an honest living. Definitely. All right. Thank you very much, Rob. We're going to give this a try, girls, in just a minute. How cool is that?